Okay, this is AP, AB, and BC calculus. We're doing unit two, section two, which is defining the derivative of a function and using derivative notation. So uh, in the last video, right, in unit two, section one, uh, we learned about how we can find average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Uh, instantaneous rate of, rate of change used a limit uh, on the difference quotient, and it used this notation f prime, and that's the derivative of the function f. So we're going to go ahead and start talking about that and do a bunch of problems moving forward. So. The derivative of f of x. The first derivative of f of x is given by the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h minus f of x all over the quantity x plus h or minus x, which we would just write as an h, right? And that is called f prime of x, right? So we read this as f prime of x later on uh, in one of the videos in unit 3. We're going to learn how to find higher order derivatives like f double prime for the second derivative or f triple prime for the third derivative, and we're going to learn uh, about that. Now there are some different notations for, for these derivatives, right? So the action we take when we, when we find a derivative is called differentiation, right? Um, so again, you can say something is a derivative, that's a noun, but if you were talking about uh, the verb, you should probably say differentiate, not derive. Uh, you'll hear both, but differentiate is, is more correct. So, so we have this prime notation, and you'll see that with f prime of x or g prime of x or h prime of x, and you'll see it with y prime. Um, but we also have this dy dx notation, and where we get this from is because to differentiate is essentially a mathematical action, and you differentiate with respect to a variable. So, so this... Right, so this is the action you're being asked to take. The action is differentiate. Okay, so the action is differentiate, um, and this is the this is the function or the equation that you would be differentiating. So, so the action d dx means differentiate with respect to x. Okay, so we're differentiating with respect to x, and later on we'll learn that we can differentiate with respect to t for time, uh, differentiate res with respect to r for radius. We can differentiate with respect to a lot of things. Differentiate with respect to theta, which is an angle usually in a polar situation. We'll talk about that in BC calc. Um, so again, this d dx, even though we write it as dy dx, what it's actually saying is do this command to this equation, right? So differentiate y. Uh, and both of these notations are totally fine, um, or all three of them rather, if you consider the y prime and the f prime to be different. Um, you'll see them in different situations. You'll probably have preferences. Uh, in situations where it's applicable, I definitely use the prime notation because I think it's easier, uh, but, but it's going to be a thing that is pretty much interchangeable. You could be asked to find f prime, you could be asked to find dy dx, you could be asked to find y prime, or you could just be told to differentiate and all of those things would mean the same thing. All right, so we're going to use the limit definition of the derivative that we've learned, right? So we're going to use that limit definition to find uh, f prime of x. So when we go to do this, remember that the limit definition is that f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So I'm just going to write that up here, and I'm going to plug in what that would look like. So 5 times an x plus h minus a 4, right? minus f of x, so that'll be minus in parentheses, because when there's a negative in front of two terms, I'm going to have to distribute, right, all over h. Now we can see right away that I can't plug in because h would be 0, and I promise you that if you plugged in, the top would end up being a 5x minus 4 minus that entire same quantity, so you get 0 over 0. So this is one of those situations where I'm going to have to simplify. So I'm going to keep limit as h approaches 0, and then I'm just going to distribute all this stuff and clean up. So I get a 5x plus 5h minus 4 on the top, and when I distribute this negative, I get a negative 5x and a plus 4. So a thing is going to happen every single time I do this, and if it doesn't happen, it's totally you. Go back and double check your math. Anybody that doesn't have an h is magically going to sum to 0. So the 5x and the negative 5x sum to 0. The negative 4 and the positive 4 sum to 0. And, and magically what I'm left with is an expression that only has things that have h's on the top, which means that I can factor out an h, right? Now on top this time I only have a 5h, so there's not a whole lot of like factoring out. You could just cancel. So I would get that this is the limit as h approaches 0 of a 5. Well, there's nowhere to plug in the h, so the answer is just 5, right? That's a constant. So uh, so what I want you to notice is that f prime of x for this given function is a 5. Now, um, we're going to move forward and we're going to learn a lot faster ways to do this. You're not going to use the limit definition of a derivative past, honestly, this video. Um, 
But it's an important thing to know because at some point you'll be asked problems that require that you recognize this pattern, this difference quotient with the limit as h approaches 0. Um, in general, these are tedious problems. You're not going to be asked to do very many of them by hand. Uh, but you need to be exposed to them so that you can spot the pattern when you see it later in math, uh, specifically later in this course. All right, so let's go ahead. You're going to try this one. Uh, you can pause me if you want. I'm going to go ahead and walk through it. Notice that I do have to be mindful that the second I start differentiating, I write f prime. So I need to make sure I have this limit as h approaches 0 in every step until I'm not using the limit anymore, right, until I've plugged in 0 for h. So f of the quantity x plus h is going to be a negative 2 times the quantity x plus h plus a 7, right? That's my f of x plus h, right, minus, in parentheses, my, x plus, or my f of x, which would be negative 2x plus 7, right? all divided by an h. And again, I assure you that if you plug in, you're going to get 0 over 0. Uh, so I get f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0. And I just distribute everybody, right? So I'm going to have a negative 2x minus a 2h plus a 7. When I distribute this negative, I get a plus 2x minus a 7 all over an h, right? And as we saw last time, anybody that doesn't have an h should magically sum to 0. And sure enough, they do, right? So I'm left with just this negative 2h, so I get that my f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2h over h, which means this is just a negative 2 because there's nowhere to plug the h in. So f prime of x is a negative 2. Again, I could tell you that by just looking at this expression, and if you don't know how to do that yet, that's totally fine. I've been doing calculus for over 20 years. Um, but Within one or two more videos, you're going to be able to look at this f of x expression and tell me that this is f prime of x, and that's great. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one that's a little bit harder because now we've got some squared stuff. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult. So my f prime of x, right, remember it's not the same as f of x, is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. So now when I do my f of x plus h, anywhere I see an x, I'm going to have to replace it with an x plus h. So this is going to be a 3 x plus h quantity squared minus a 4, again I need to plug in an x plus h, right, plus a 3, minus, in parentheses, the entire original function, right, um, and then all of that's over an h. And you can see that if I plugged in h is 0, I'll get a 0 in the bottom, but on top I will also get the original f of x formula minus itself, which would give me a 0. So the biggest issue we run into here is that people are not necessarily awesome at foiling this out, right? So if I, if I distribute this out, Right? I'd have to FOIL, I'd do x plus h times x plus h. And when I do that, uh, let me just do the other things first because they're a little bit easier. Uh, minus h plus 3, minus 3x squared plus a 4x minus a 3 all over h. Okay, so when I FOIL out that thing that I put in red, right, um, it's going to be x squared plus 2xh, or hx, it doesn't matter which, plus h squared. Now. We'll go into a little side note in a second after I finish this problem, and I'll show you um, what you should do if this is a higher power than 2. If you had had to do it, you really could have just foiled this out, and, and that's not a big deal. And, and I think you should get accustomed to foiling that out because it definitely is a thing that comes up. But when we're done with this example, I'll show you how we can use Pascal's triangle if the powers are higher, uh, just in case you forgot that skill. So when I distribute the 3, I get a 6xh plus a 3h squared minus a 4x minus an h plus a 3 minus a 3x squared plus a 4x minus a 3 all over an h. This is the kind of problem that when you do it in your notebook, you probably turn your notebook to landscape. I'm just saying. All right, so then let's look at my things that don't have h's. Sure enough, I have a negative 3x squared and a positive 3x squared. I have a negative 4x and a positive 4x, and I have a positive 3 and a negative 3. So see how everybody that didn't have an h magically sums to 0. So I get that f prime of x, and make that prime a little more obvious, equals the limit as h approaches 0 of a 6xh plus a 3h squared minus an... Oh, hey, wait, minus 4. That's a 4h. Come on, brain. Hold on, people. That's a 4. When I distributed it, I forgot the 4. My bad. Okay, so minus a 4h. Cool. All divided by h. So now notice that everybody has an h, which means I can factor an h out of this. Right, so again, just oops to my brain for missing distributing the 4, because when I did this, I inexplicably didn't make it a 4. I don't know. So the limit as h approaches 0, if you yank an h out, you're left with 6x plus 3h minus 4 
all over an h, the h's cancel, and now when you plug in, remember you're plugging in for h, so you're gonna get 6x plus zero minus four, and this 6x minus four is in fact the derivative of f of x equals three x squared minus four x plus three. Right, so this is my f prime of x, uh, trust me, that's totally how it works. And you're gonna make little mistakes like that sometimes, like I just accidentally didn't distribute the four. Of all things, it was the easiest thing to distribute and my brain just totally flaked on it. Anyway, okay, so let's, um, I'm gonna insert a blank slide real quick and I just wanna talk about Pascal's triangle. So when you have a plus b to the nth power, right, when you have binomial, um, if you have a plus b to the zero, it's just a one, right? If you have an a plus b to the first, it's just a 1a plus a 1b. I promise there's a reason that I'm writing the coefficients. If you have an a plus b quantity squared, right, we just saw that that's an a squared plus 2ab plus a b squared. Now notice I am writing the coefficients. If I have an a plus b to the third, I happen to know what this is going to look like. So 3ab squared plus b cubed. Okay, so, um, sorry, and that's a one. So I'm gonna highlight the coefficients in blue for a sec. So, so this thing, these binomial coefficients, when we expand a binomial, uh, they actually create a thing that we call Pascal's triangle. So um, in Pascal's triangle, the first number in each row is a one, the, and then the, the internal numbers are the sum of the row above, uh, the terms above them. So the way I get this two is I add the one and one to get two. The external numbers are ones. I add these two numbers and get a three and a three, right? Uh, the external numbers are ones. I add these and get a four and a six and a four, and I can keep going. It, it keeps going forever, right? So this is called Pascal's triangle. Now, I'm not gonna ask you uh, to do a lot of binomial expansion, but it's helpful to know. Honestly, most of the time, you're not gonna see anything past cubed anyway. Um, what's worth noting is that you can tell what row you're in uh, by the number that appears second in the row essentially. So the row that has the two is row two, right? And, and you'll notice that row two is the one that we used when we had an x squared. And that row three is the one that has the three in it. And row four is the one that has the four in it. So if I were to ask you to use this to find a plus b to the fourth, the way it works is I use these coefficients, right? So it'd be one blank space plus four blank space plus six blank space plus four blank space plus one blank space. And then the way I fill the blank spaces is I start with this first term and I start at its highest power, which would be four, and I work my way down until it completely disappears. A and then no A at all. And then I start at the back with the, with the back term at the highest power and I work my way down until it completely disappears at the front and there's no B term. And so uh, again, this is not necessarily a specific skill you're gonna be prompted to do in calculus, but if I had given you one of these where this was cubed instead of squared, right? If I give you a cubic, it's gonna take you a lot longer to foil out x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. And if you just know that this is what the cubic foils out to, it's an awful lot faster. So just wanted to throw that out there um, so that it's something that you're familiar with. Again, it's a little bit of a review. It's not something you're specifically gonna be prompted to do, but it's important to understand how to expand a binomial. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna let you try P2. It's the same basic idea as E2. Go ahead and find F prime of X using that limit definition of the derivative. And uh, you can pause me if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and walk through it now. Again, make sure you don't just write equals, make sure you write F prime of X equals because F of X and F prime are not the same thing, right? It's gonna be a negative two X plus H quantity squared plus a five X plus H minus an eight and then in parentheses, subtract the entire original function, right? And what's one of the most common mistakes here, and it's just a thing that I've noticed after doing this for a long time, is that people forget to put uh, parentheses here and then they don't distribute the negative. Remember that when you get to the point where you're adding all the terms, everybody that doesn't have an H should disappear, right? Okay, so I already know that this becomes X squared plus two X H plus H squared, right? That two X H, I said it and didn't write it. I know that this is what this thing becomes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and know that in my head and distribute the negative two. So I get a negative two x squared minus a four x h minus a two h squared. When I distribute the five, this time I actually pay attention and make sure I distribute the five, unlike the tragedy that happened with the negative four in the last one, right? So I have a five x plus five, uh, plus five h. And then here I get a plus two x squared minus a five x plus an eight. And I kind of had to go a little bit uh, stacked because there was not enough space, right? So now, again, at this step, I should know if I made any simple distribution errors because anybody that doesn't have an H should cancel. Now, interestingly enough, 
uh, my error last time wouldn't have been caught by this because my error was on a term that had an H. But you'll notice that anybody that doesn't have an H uh, magically sums to zero. And so I'm left with f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of a negative 4xh minus a 2h squared plus a 5h all over h. Now, I can either factor out an h or I can recognize that I just can cancel one of these h's from each term. It doesn't matter to me how you do it. Um, I just need you to spot that you can get rid of one of the h's, right? So I can only get rid of one of them, so that middle term is still going to have an h, right? Uh, the h is going to cancel. And when I plug in, I'm going to get that my f prime of x is a negative 4x plus a 0 plus a 5, which is just negative 4x plus 5. And again, you're going to be able to look at this expression and give me this derivative uh, in a matter of seconds in a couple more videos. So you're not always going to have to use this very lengthy process, but it's important to spot this pattern and that this pattern means differentiate, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this with one that's a fraction. Good times. So my f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. Well, that's going to be a 3 over an x plus h plus 1 minus f of x, which is just the original function, all over an h. So if I plug in, I'm again going to get 0 over 0. But we saw this before when we simplified algebraically with limits. We need to get a common denominator. The problem is that as ugly as it is, Neither of these have anything in common. Even though x plus h plus 1 and x plus 1 kind of look alike, they're not common factors at all, right? So I'm going to have to multiply the entire first fraction by this x plus 1 over x plus 1 and the entire second fraction by this x plus h plus 1 over x plus h plus 1. So I'm going to get that f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of a, I'm going to distribute this 3 to these guys, so I'm going to get a 3x plus 3. And then I'm going to distribute this negative 3 to the second set of terms. So I'm going to get a minus 3x minus 3h minus 3. All over my nice common denominator, which to be honest, I'm not going to FOIL. Um, the common denominator is not the thing that's going to cancel. The reason I know that is because I'm going to have to flip and cancel this h. The h is going to end up on the same floor as that stuff, right? Because this h is secretly an h over 1. Everybody is secretly over 1. So. What's going to happen is on top, if I look, anybody that doesn't have an h is magically going to sum to 0 again. So I'm going to get that this f prime of x is the limit as h approaches 0 of a negative 3h on top of this crazy denominator times a 1 over h, right? Because when I divide by a fraction, I can flip and multiply by the reciprocal. That means that these h's cancel, and I get that this is a negative 3 over an x plus 1 times an x plus 0 plus 1, which are both the same term. So my f prime of x is going to look like a negative 3 on top of the quantity x plus 1 squared. Now again, in, a, in by the end of, well, this is the chain rule. So by the start of unit 3, you're going to understand how you could just look at this and find this, right? I can look at this answer and know that this is the answer within a matter of seconds. And you're going to know how to do that. So if this is stressful, if this long version of the limit stuff is not your jam, don't panic, it's not going to define you in calculus, I promise. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and you try a P3, right? Um, and again, just to be clear, when I say that I can look at this and know the answer, this is the answer to this problem. I don't know that because I just constructed uh, the problem now. I made this slide like weeks ago. I know this because I know how to look at this problem and give you the answer, and you're going to know how to do that too. Um, so that's going to be my answer. Uh, in my head without doing any of this arduous, difficult work. But you still need to get used to how this works. So let's do the limit as, x, uh, as h approaches 0 of uh, 10, sorry, it's a positive 10, over x plus h minus 2 minus a 10 over x minus 2 all over an h. The same thing's going to apply. I need that common denominator. I'm going to multiply this entire expression by x plus h minus a 2, and I'm going to multiply this entire expression by x minus a 2. So I'm going to get that f prime of x is a 10x minus 20. I'm going to distribute this negative 10 to all three of these. I get a negative 10x minus a 10h plus a 20 all over this x plus h minus 2 times an x minus 2 all over this h that's secretly over a 1. But I forgot a thing, and you're going to forget a thing sometimes too. Make sure that until you plug in, you're writing limit. And if that means that you realize at the last minute and squeeze it in between your equal sign and your fraction, great. You are not the first person. You will not be the last. Um, so I have 
10x and negative 10x, they cancel. I have a negative 20 and a positive 20, they cancel. So I get that this is f prime of x equals uh, negative 10h over this ugly denominator that I'm not even going to bother foiling out, times a 1 over h, because when I divide by a fraction, I flip and multiply by the reciprocal. The h is cancel. Oh, look. Look what I did. Limit as h approaches 0. I'm totally not kidding you. You're going to forget this. And sometimes you're going to be like, Hogan, it's right here. That's OK. I'm not going to take points off if you have to put a little arrow. And you're like, Hogan, I get it. My bad. That's OK. We've all been there. Uh, in fact, did I do it on the last slide? I didn't. I did it right on the last slide. So, um, so I'm going to get that this is a negative 10 over x plus 0 minus 2 times x minus 2, which is totally a negative 10 over x minus 2 quantity squared. And it's like I'm psychic. Holy cow. All right. Cool. Using the limit definition to find the derivative, we're going to find f prime of this root thing, right? Now again, I know ahead of time that this is what the answer is going to be. I know that's the answer because of a skill that you're going to have soon but don't have yet. Don't panic. Um, but we're going to find it the other way, right? We're going to find it the long way. So the limit as h approaches 0 of root x plus h minus 3 minus root x minus 3 all over an h. Now, what I have here is a limit that would be 0 over 0 and has roots. So what I have to do is rationalize. So I'm going to times by root x plus h minus 3 plus root x minus 3 on both the top and the bottom. Sorry, I didn't need that parenthesis. And I'm not sure if I picked the big eraser. Let's fix it. OK. So I'm going to create a difference of squares, right? So this is my a minus b. I'm going to create a difference of squares by multiplying by a plus b. So I'm going to get x plus h minus 3 plus root x minus 3. OK, great. So I'm only going to FOIL the root floor. And we've seen this before because I want the stuff on top to cancel. So I'm going to get the limit as h approaches 0 of when I FOIL the root floor, I'm just going to get an x plus h minus 3 because that would be the first. The outer and inner are going to cancel, right? Because if you look, the outside and the inside are the product of the two roots, right? The x minus h minus 3 and the x minus 3. But there's a plus and a minus, so the always sums to 0. And then I'm going to get minus, in parentheses, the last terms, which would be the root x minus 3 times root x minus 3. On the bottom, I have an h times this entirely ugly, disgusting mess of roots. Uh, minus 3, my bad. Minus 3 plus root x minus 3. Great. OK, so now when I clean up the top, I'm pretty sure that the top ends up being x plus h minus 3 minus x plus 3. So this is x plus h minus 3 minus x plus 3. Well, you can see that these guys sum to 0 and these guys sum to 0. So I just get an h on the top. On the bottom, I have this h factored out, which is handy. Oh, it's a minus 3. Come on, brain. Minus 3. OK, the h is cancel. Oh, sorry, my bad. There's a limit as h approaches 0. So I'm going to get a 1 over. Well, when I plug in h is 0 now, I get root x plus 3 time, uh, plus root x plus 3 minus 3. Come on, brain. Sorry, everybody. I keep converting it to pluses, and I don't know why. Uh, minus 3 and root x minus 3. So sure enough, I get 1 over 2 root x minus 3. And that is totally the answer that I was able to give you by looking at the problem. OK. so. Uh, let's go on to the next one, right? Give it a try. It's the same concept. Again, just spoiler alert, the answer to this thing is going to be a 1 over 2 root the quantity x plus 2, right? And again, you'll be able to do that. You're just not able to do it yet. So my f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of root x plus h plus 2 minus root x plus 2 all over an h. I notice that if I plug in uh, h is 0, I get 0 over 0. So I have to create a difference of squares, right? I'm going to rationalize and create a difference of squares. So it's going to be root x plus h plus 2 plus root x plus 2. And then on the bottom, root x plus h plus 2 plus root x plus 2, right? Uh, and so when I FOIL the top, I'm going to get x plus h plus 2 minus, in parentheses, x plus 2, right? Because the outer and inner cancel. On the bottom, I have an h times this ugly root. And you'll notice I didn't write the limit yet, and that's fine. I think, personally, I think you should try and write it before you start the step, because I think you're likely to forget it. That said, I frequently also don't write it at the start of the step and have to go back and write limit. When I distribute this, I notice that the x gets a negative x, and the 2 gets a negative 2. So they're gone. So I get f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of an h on top of an h times this entirely ugly 
set of roots. Cancel the h's, and I get that this is a 1 over root x plus 2 plus another root x plus 2, which is totally a 1 over 2 of that root x plus 2, which is the answer that I said we'd get when I started. Cool. All right, so if we evaluate the derivative f prime at a given point a, so you can see that written as f prime of a or dy dx evaluated at a with this vertical line and then it equals a or sometimes a y prime of a, uh, we get the line, the slope of the line that is tangential to the curve, right? So and we saw that because where we originally saw this dish difference quotient, right, where we originally saw this difference quotient was as a way to calculate the slope of a tangent line, right? If you're asked about the normal line, normal is perpendicular to the tangent line. Thus, it is the opposite reciprocal, okay? So uh, again, if I wanted the normal line, I would take whatever the tangent slope was and I would do the opposite reciprocal, which in my brain, I always say flip slope change sign. So let's go ahead and walk through a couple of examples. So we're gonna find the slopes of the lines tangent and normal to f of x at this given value. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to find the derivative. Good times. So First thing I need, right, I need f prime of x. Once I have f prime of x, I can then find f prime of the x value I was given to get the tangent slope, right? So first thing I need to do is find f prime. So f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h quantity squared plus 3 times x plus h minus the entire function in parentheses all over h. Oh, spoiler alert, again, I told you you're going to be able to do this faster. In, in one or two more videos, you're just going to look at this and know that f prime is uh, a 2x plus 3. And once you know f prime is a 2x plus 3, it's a very fast problem and it's totally easy. But you don't technically know that yet, so we're going to go ahead and walk through and find it. So the limit as h approaches 0 is going to be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h minus x squared minus 3x all over h. We've seen before that anybody that doesn't have an h magically sums to 0. And sure enough, they do. So I'm left with f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0. And I'm going to go ahead and cut a step out and factor out this h. I get a 2x, right, plus an h plus a 3. The h's are going to cancel. And I get 2x plus 3, which is, again, what you're going to be able to get just by visual inspection soon. OK, so all of that was to find f prime, right? Now that I've found f prime, right? All of that work was really hard. A, my answer to A, the tangent slope that I'm going to call mt is f prime evaluated at 2. Well, that's going to be 2 times 2 plus 3, which is 7. So my tangent slope is a 7. If I'm asked to find my normal slope, which I'm going to call m sub n, I just flip slope change sign. So I'm going to flip the 7 over 1 into a 1 over 7, and I'm going to change the sign to a negative, and that's it. Now, again, if, I, if you had been able to just look at this function and know the derivative instantly, then you would have been able to do this problem much, much faster, and that's where we're going to be at in another couple videos, okay? All right, so go ahead and try, uh, try P5. Again, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and tell you that f prime of x is a negative 6x plus 5, okay? So if you know that, right? So if you know that, it's going to be really fast to find the other two answers, right? And so, uh, so I'm going to walk you through, if I knew this information, which I do, and you will soon, the tangent slope is just going to be f prime evaluated at the point 1, which is just going to be a negative 6 plus 5, so my tangent slope is a negative 1. Well, the opposite reciprocal of negative 1, if you flip a 1 over 1, you get a 1 over 1 still, and then you change the sign and you get a positive 1. Right? So the opposite reciprocal would be a 1. So those are my two answers in the end. That said, right now you don't know how to cheat and skip to this derivative. So I would have to do it the other way, right? So I would have to, I'd have to go ahead and find it the long way, which is fine, right? It's not a big deal. So I would write f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 3, negative 3 times this x plus h quantity squared plus a 5 times x plus h minus, in parentheses, negative 3x squared plus 5x, all over an h. When I distribute, right, we know this becomes an x squared plus 2xh uh, plus h squared, so I'm going to get a negative 3x squared. Notice I forgot limit. I'll fix it again in a sec. Minus 6xh minus 3h squared plus 5x plus 5h. Uh, I'm going to be kind of lazy and put my plus 3x squared right under this guy, and I'm going to go ahead and put my minus 5x right under here, all over an h, and it was the limit as h approaches 0.
right? And that goes right there. I just kind of didn't fit it. So notice that it's not an accident that my 3x squared and negative 3x squared and my 5x and negative 5x sum to 0. So I get that f prime of x is a negative 6xh minus 3h squared plus 5h all over h limit as h approaches 0, right? One of these h's cancels out of all of them, so I get negative 6x plus 0 plus 5, which is totally what I told you that f prime would be, because you'll be able to do that soon, right? So negative 6x plus 5, and then you would plug in and evaluate the tangent slope and flip slope change sign to find the normal slope. Okay, so now we're going to find, uh, now notice that those just said slopes, right? These ones say equations, so we're going to have to do a little bit more work. So the first thing, again, when you get a little bit better at this, you're going to, and, and like when you know a little more, I shouldn't say when you're better at this, you're doing a great job, it's totally fine. When you know a little bit more, which is two or three videos away, you're going to be able to look at this and know that f prime of x is going to be a negative 4 over x squared, which is great. You don't know that yet, but trust me that you will very soon. So the first thing I need, so anytime I hear equations, right, when I hear that I need an equation of a line, I need two things. I need a point, which I can find right away because I was given 3 comma blank and I use the original function to find that. I plug in 3 and I'm going to get 4 thirds. The second thing I need is a slope and that's going to involve calculus, right? So in order to find the slope, I need f prime of x, right? And then for part a, f prime of 4 is going to be my tangent slope, right? And for part b, Part B is going to be the opposite reciprocal of the tangent slope, right? So that's what I'm looking at. That's what this problem entails. So I need the point, I need the slope, and then I write my answer in point slope. So let's go ahead and find this uh, derivative. Let's differentiate. So my f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of a 4 over x plus h minus a 4 over x all over an h. I need to multiply by the other fraction's denominator, right, to get a common denominator. When I do that, I'm going to get that my f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of 4x minus, and when I distribute this negative 4, I'm going to get minus 4x minus 4h all over an x times an x plus h. And then remember that this h was really an h over 1, so when I flip and multiply by the reciprocal, I end up with this h on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and sum these guys to 0, and I recognize that an h can now cancel. The limit as h approaches 0 of negative 4h over this h times an x times an x plus h. The h is cancel, and when I plug in h to 0, I get negative 4 over x squared, which again, you'll be able to do much more quickly. Once I know that, I now know that my tangent slope should be f prime of 3, which would be a negative 4 over 9. So that's my tangent slope which means my normal slope is a 9 fourths. So now let's go ahead and write our two answers. So my answer to a is y minus the y value equals my m, so in a it was negative 4 ninths, x minus the x value. If you really want to solve for y, please just add the 4 thirds over. Do not bother to distribute and clean up. It's a terrible life choice. So this is the best option for your tangent line. You didn't bother, you solved for y, but you didn't bother to distribute or anything else. Uh, let me erase and give myself a little bit of space to do, uh, to do b. Right, so there was my a. Right, so that was my answer to a, and my answer to b, right, my normal line, is the exact same thing, y minus 4 thirds equals, but now it'll be a 9 fourth slope, x minus 3. And that answer's great. If you stubbornly want to solve for y, just add the 4 thirds over. Please don't bother to distribute or anything. It's just a terrible life choice, okay? Cool. All right. Uh, we're going to do a P6, and that's going to be our very last one for the uh, for this video, right? So I know ahead of time that my f prime is going to end up being a 2 over x squared. I already know that. So based on that, I can actually tell you that my tangent slope is going to be a 2 over 25, and that that makes my normal slope a negative 25 halves. I can also tell you that my point is 5 comma negative 2 fifths, right, because I use the original function. So I can do all of this without that crazy limit definition. So what I want to point out is that while right now this is a really long problem, it's not going to be a really long problem forever, right? So, so I'm going to skip to the end and tell you what my answer should be, and then I'm going to walk you through the limit process to get this value, because this is the part that makes this a long problem. The rest doesn't. So my answer in A is going to be y minus the y value, so that'd be a plus 2 fifths, equals my slope for tangent, which is 2 25 fifths times x minus 5, 
if you wanted to solve for y, you could just add the two fifths or subtract the two fifths over, rather, my bad. Uh, so subtract the two fifths over, and that's fine. Um, my answer for b, right, if I wanted the normal line, would be essentially this exact same thing, this y equals, but instead of 25 or 2 twenty fifths, rather, it would be negative 25 halves. Uh, x minus 5 minus the 2 fifths, right? So, so those are where my answers are going to end up. The reason I'm showing you that is I think some of you may get ahead and you might think, why do I have to do this long limit thing? Remember, you're not going to be asked to do that forever. So let's go ahead and find the limit value, right? Let's go ahead and find the limit uh, value or the limit definition of the derivative just to show you that it's the value I said it would be. This is a negative 2 over x plus h plus a 2 over x all over h, and it's the limit as h approaches 0. I know it's squeezed in there. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by x plus h over x plus h and x over x, and I'm going to get that this is the limit as h approaches 0 of this will be a negative 2x, so I'll get negative 2x plus 2x plus 2h. Well, those are going to sum to 0, right, over this x times an x plus h, technically over an h over 1, but we're going to flip that guy, right? So I'm going to get that this is the limit as h approaches 0 of a 2h over an x times an x plus h times an h, right? Because this is actually going to be times a 1 over h, right? The h's cancel, and sure enough, I get my 2 over x squared that I told you we'd get. So that's my f prime, and then the rest of it's a lot simpler. All right, so that is our video.